Man, a whole year on YouTube. I should treat myself. You know what? I think I'll go to Disney World, just like I wanted to do back in that dumb Nintendo Land video. And better yet, I'll get one of those selfie stick things and film myself walking across the entire park and then upload it to YouTube and get tons of views. It's genius. But most importantly, it's original. Okay, Disney World, let's do this. Fun! Put put. Here I come. If you were a kid back in the early 90s, you probably remember a little company by the name of Humongous Entertainment. Or you don't, because your brain hadn't fully developed by then, and I mean, I'm sure a lot of things have happened since then that were probably a lot more important. Like uh, playing Maple Story for several years and uh, playing some more Maple Story for several more years. They made a name for themselves by creating simple but engaging point-and-click games with lovable mascots like Freddy Fish and Fatty the Bear. Okay, well, less fatty, more Freddy. And what was the secret to all of their games being such nostalgic masterpieces? The answer is simple. Touching. Who doesn't love touching? Touch Lamb. Touch Kirby. Touch yourself. Touch yourself some more. Nearly all of their games revolved around touching things. See that sun? Touch it. See that trash can? Touch it. Please don't let today be Monday. Please don't let today be Monday. <laughs> See that highly dangerous explosive? No, you, sh you probably shouldn't touch it. That would be setting a bad example for the children. Touching is good. But above all of Humongous' iconic mascots stood a shining beacon of 90s charm, class, and elegance. Everyone's favorite purple pal, Putt-Putt. Now maybe I am a bit biased here considering Putt-Putt was my gateway into the realm of Humongous Entertainment games, but there was always something I found especially charming and silly about his games in particular. Maybe it's the way everything seems so wacky and out of place while he kinda just sits there with that cheesy grin, occasionally eyeing the madness that takes place around him but never really caring. Because, I mean, let's be honest, he's a talking car. Nothing trumps the weirdness that is him simply existing. That being said, my first Putt-Putt game was in fact not Joins the Parade, but rather Goes to the Moon. And I have to say, it was out of this world. Great joke! Thanks, Putt-Putt! I guess you could say my humor is pretty... spatial. No thanks! The game begins with Pee-Pee, yeah, that's what we're calling him now, making his way to Mr. Firebird's famous, fabled, fabulous, fancy, fun firework factory. Hooray for alliteration! Young Putt-Putt here has been invited to set off fireworks under the careful supervision of a car whose apparent greatest joy in life is inviting little cars to his workshop so he can stare at their bumper while they play with his rockets. <sighs> After squirting what is, according to Mr. Pervert here, worms, Oh, ho, the squiggly worms are my favorite! Yeah, I'll bet they are, you dirty hunk of chunk. Into your canister and launching it off into the sky, a rogue butterfly who clearly has a grudge with Pep the dog breaks into the building and causes everything to go horribly awry. 90s hijinks, am I right? <laughs> oh, club, I miss those days. Buckle your seatbelt, butt butt! You're going for a ride! It was in this exact moment that I realized I was about to embark on the greatest journey of my young life, meeting some of the greatest friends a car could ever have, and creating memories that could only be made on the moon. Star Fox time! Well, would you look at that? We've landed on the moon! And hey look, it's planet Earth! Hey, wait a second. There's something not quite right about this picture. He's only got eight fingers! It's here that it becomes immediately apparent that horrifying alien creatures live nearly everywhere you click. 
in this crater, in that crater, in this rocket, in this... Gross. But we'll set aside our terror for the greater good. We'll keep on trucking along even in the face of danger. We'll- and we're stuck. PP here says we should call for help, but I don't have a phone and I'm pretty much out of ideas for how to get out of this mess, so... Yeah, you're on your own, putt. What's wrong, little buddy? Uh, do you not see me stuck in this acidic waste dump with goop aliens that want to suck out my car brains rapidly approaching? Get me out of here! So, Putt-Putt gets saved by this creeper from before who happens to be a Land Rover from Earth named, you guessed it, Doug. JK, it's Rover because... why not? He explains how he's been trying to get off this alien-infested planet and back to Earth, and yet all he's managed to achieve is getting this picture of the moon. Clearly a master intellect on a similar level as the genius engineer, Mr. Firebird. <laughs> yet somehow, thanks to the arrival of Pee, Pee here, Rover thinks up a plan to get back home, fix up an ice cream stand, and use it to fly back to Earth. What could possibly go wrong? And so it's up to Putt-Putt to find the steering wheel, the nose cone. The but of course, not before torturing this poor bird here and you're a mean one. Bram! Now, it's important to note here that we, being a car, run on gas. And having just finished soaring through space for however long it takes to get from Earth to the moon, we're probably running low on it. So let's get Putt-Putt schmeisted. Okay, now let's go get some ga- oh, hey! An arcade machine! Welcome to Bear Stormin', the coolest game on the moon. Mainly because it's the only game on the moon, but uh, uh... The goal of this game within a game is to fly your plane into balloons, which somehow fills your gas gauge. All while avoiding flying cows and uh... uh, uh oh, sorry, I'm just um, still thinking about the cows. But two things in particular I feel obligated to point out are one, when you hit the balloons, they explode in a burst of what appears to be blood. And before you say, no toasty you stupid, that's just because the balloon is red. Allow me to clarify, they explode in a shower of blood regardless of what color they are. Red, green, yellow, they all bleed. Which then begs the question, are we killing living beings? And two, on a similar note, and considering Putt-Putt is a living car, did we just commit murder? I'm suddenly not so sure I can live with myself anymore. Farewell, cruel world! Oh, he survived. Oh well. When we finally make it to the gas station, it turns out that the manager isn't even there and he hit a note in whatever this thing is. Seriously, can we, can we just stop for a second? What is this? Who designed this contraption? It literally lacks any sense of logic and reasoning. And in a game where this, and this, and this... ...happens almost every single time you click anything, I expect just a bit more thought and sense put into these kind of things. The note tells us that the proprietor, Robbie Radar, is waiting at the Moon Bubble apartment, and in true Putt-Putt fashion, we instead head to Moon City Hall. Because Putt-Putt has a score to settle with the Moon Mafioso boss. I need a key to start the rocket ship. Oh 
Mui, 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 Mui. Put, put. Welcome to my planet. I hear you in the market for a very particular set of keys. Yes, please. That's what I thought. But hold your horses. I need you to take care of someone for me. You see, there's this guy that's been hassling me for too oh, long. Oh, I like doing good deeds. Yeah, so I need you to handle this red alien. Goes by the name of Johnny Waffle. Wow! Just go dump Johnny Waffles in the moon goo and you can have the key. Oh, I like doing good deeds. You're an idiot. Thanks, Governor Moonbeam. I hate you. So after we've dumped this poor sap into the moon goo, we head back to the governor's palace and have the difficult task of deciding which key we want. I mean, there are just so many keys. But we settle for the most boring one. Because of course our small child brains haven't developed enough yet to make it easy to differentiate from any but the most basic key and carry on our way. Up next, Putt-Putt, who's a well-known Mavericks fan, decides to stop by the b-ball court to shoot some hoops and... Oh no. I think we've stumbled across the bad part of town. <laughs> These guys look like they mean business. We better show them how rough and tough we are. And now that they know not to mess with PP, we, uh, leave. Because apparently that part of the map is entirely pointless. Carrying on with this stream of pointlessness, we stop by the Alien Plastic Surgery Center where, through the magic of surgery, we make miracles happen. Miracles! Why, you've created moon magic! See? It agrees. After watching these Jetsons mice break the fourth wall by taking a picture of me, we come across this horrifying blue alien with a dead-eyed stare and he asks, would you like to play Alien Tag? To which we respond, Nope. Having finally given in and tagged a bunch of creepy alien dudes, PP ends up getting all the moon crystals he needs. But it's here that I feel the need to point out one of the glaring flaws in this game. The quality of its voiceovers. Seriously? Listen to this guy. You won. All five. Glowing moon crystals. He sounds like one of those robotic automated voice thingies. You know, like on the phone. It's so hilariously awkward and out of place. That's where the steering wheel goes. Hello again! Do you have all the moon crystal to buy the rocket? Do you know where I could find them? I do. On second thought, it actually fits this game pretty well. Moving on, PP meets the fabled man on the moon. I've wanted a picture of myself for 10,000 years. Oh, it's a picture of me. I look just as I had imagined. So, crusty? Oh, I didn't mean it, Mr. Moon Man. Please don't moon murder me with your magic moon wall stars. It's beautiful. I wonder what the rings are made of. Ice, rock, and dust. Wow. Dust. After finishing up wasting time looking at constellations with that one creepy eye, PP meets back up with Rover, who's demonstrating exactly why he's still stuck on the moon. Hi, Rover. What's up? The steering wheel. That's what. But I can't reach it. Well, bye. Having at last arrived at the Moon Bubble apartment, we encounter several strangers, including a buff blue steer in a pink tank top, a stereotypical alien nerd, a fire-breathing dragon, and even a cross between the Pokemon Sock and Throw. But there is one other left to discover. And I'm not talking about Robbie Radar. Ladies and gentlemen, the bane of my childhood. finally over? I, di I did it! I conquered my childhood fear! I did it! I and we all did it together. Shut up, Putt Putt! Don't you take this away from me! It's been a long time coming, but at last we've done it. We've collected every single item necessary to rebuild this ice cream shack slash rocket, and it's time to get out of this dump. And so Putt Putt finished preparations for the voyage home, attaching the rocket cone, the wheel, the- I'm ready to go when you are, Putt Putt. And starting the rocket, thus proving that even a little kid using an ice cream stand as a rocket ship with a random key he got from some mob boss, a wheel he found just hanging out on a mountain somewhere, and all that other junk, can make his dreams come true, so long as he believes hard enough and follows his heart.
Hello there, this is the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, why not subscribe? And if you want to keep up to date with all my hot, toasty gossip, be sure to follow me on my socials, the links of which are in the description. And last but not least, I've got some more videos there for you to watch, and uh, you should probably get on that. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.